Hi, this is Ben Comet. And Jesse Rowe. Today we are going to be talking about SSDs, their flash storage, their controllers, their interfaces, and new advances in SSD technology. So when you peel off the case of your generic SSD, the first thing that you're going to see is a large collection of NAND chips. These are where the actual data is stored, and we'll go into more detail on what exactly those are and how they're made later. You're also going to see a controller. This is essentially a small CPU that's actually comparable to in power to one of the ones that we've made in class. And all it does is checks for errors, looks for bad blocks, garbage collection, and spreads the data evenly throughout the SSD. And then the SD RAM serves as a cache to quickly serve up data to, these, in this particular instance, a SATA interface, although there are other interfaces we will go over later. And here's what it will actually look like when you take the cover off of a Samsung Pro Evo 850 SSD. There are two main forms of flash memory. NOR and NAND. NAND is used exclusively in SSDs due to its smaller footprint and relatively cheap manufacturing costs. Although NOR flash is not used in SSDs, we are going to cover both types of flash memory so that the benefits of NAND can be contrasted with NOR. NOR flash contains pairs of memory cells that each share a common ground wire, referred to as a sink, and a bit line connection. Each cell is connected to the ground on one end and to a bit line on the other. Each individual cell stores data using a memory transistor. These are represented by each word line in the diagram. Each transistor is composed of a control gate, the top layer of the transistor in the diagram, and a floating gate, the lower segment of the transistor in the diagram. The control gate is in turn connected to a word wire, which is used to extract the stored data. As voltage passes through the bit wire, the control gate attracts electrons near it. As these bits travel between the bit wire and the control gate, they are trapped within the floating gate and remain until the, in the gate until the data is erased. Extracting data from each cell is accomplished by placing a high voltage on the word wire connected to a specific transistor. This high voltage creates a reaction in the transistor, which attempts to decrease the voltage on the bit line connected to the other side of the transistor. As each word wire has a voltage applied to it, the resulting dip in voltage on the bit wire generates the binary output of the data. Erasing a NOR cell is accomplished by applying a large voltage in the opposite polarity or direction of the cell. This pulls all electrons off the floating gate, resetting the state of the cell to undefined. NAND flash memory differs from NOR in the method it uses for connecting each transistor in the cell. The cell is still composed of groups of floating gate transistors, but instead of each transistor being individually connected to the bit and ground line, a set of transistors are connected in series. This is represented by the large block of word line labeled transistors in the diagram. This group is then connected to the bit line and the ground using two additional transistors, the bit line selector and the ground selector in the diagram. Using this method of grouping the floating gate transistors does use a larger number of transistors per cell, but having the transistors addressed by set allows the cell to use significantly less data wires and paths and decreases the size of the cell by up to 60%. Writing and erasing NAND uses the same process as NOR with the floating gate collecting electrons for storage and the high voltage being used to reset the gate when the data is no longer needed. Reading from NAND also uses the same basic process but on a larger scale. Instead of selecting a single transistor, an entire set is selected. The data is then extracted from the entire set by raising the voltage on all of the word lines and the connected control gates at the same time, triggering a fluctuation in voltage on the bit line due to changes in each transistor. NOR has pretty convincingly lost the NAND versus NOR storage wars, which you can see never really had a chance from the diagram. It's nearly 60% larger, and on top of that it has shockingly slow write times and will only last about 100 to 200 cycles for each write. Now it does have a few niche operations that it excels at, mostly in appliances and stuff where it will hold 
code that's only written once or twice in its lifetime, but it is read frequently because it does have very, very fast read speeds. Any modern SSD will use exclusively MAN storage. One of the most common techniques used in modern day SSDs to increase storage capacity is increasing the number of bits stored in each NAND cell. Any modern day SSD will have one of three types of bit storage, SLC, MLC, or TLC. SLC looks for high power to be one or low power to be zero. MLC looks for high, medium high, high low, and just plain low each one representing one of the four possible combinations of two bits, 00, 01, 10, and 11. MLC is similar only with seven different possible voltage values and seven different binary representations. Now all this may sound fantastic, there's a bit of a problem. With more bits in each cell, you run into more and more potential for conflicts or just general errors in reading your data. Additionally, they didn't last as long and were slower. And until the last five or six years or so, you would only run into MLC in higher end enterprise SSDs that are very expensive controllers. Now as controllers have gotten smaller and cheaper to produce, we are finally starting to see MLC and TLC show up in consumer products other than things like thumb drives, where consistency and speed really aren't as critical. Perhaps most notably of these modern SSDs is the massive 16 terabyte SSD from Samsung that also utilizes 3D NAND that we'll be talking about later. Both types of flash memory suffer from one main limitation. They have a fixed number of times that a cell can be erased, approximately 100,000 cycles for SLC NAND and a much lower value for MLC. As data is written to each cell, the oxide layer in the floating gate that traps the electrons begins to degrade, and the electrons begin to build on the gate. This can cause irregularities in the charge of the gate and can lead to data corruption. Next to the NAND cells themselves, the SSD controller is the most important component of an SSD. In most modern SSDs, the controller is its own self-contained CPU with cache, ROM, and various smaller controllers for handling access to NAND. While the main function of the controller is to manage the writing and reading of data to and from the NAND cells, it also handles other processes to extend the life of the SSD and manage bad cells. Due to the limited life of NAND cells, the controller uses a process called write leveling to distribute data evenly over the NAND cells so that all cells, ideally, age at the same rate. This process is accomplished by dynamically mapping the data contained in a specific sector to another sector upon an update to the original data. In this way, the wear level of all blocks are kept relatively even. Another feature that the controller provides is management of sectors that contain obsolete data. When data is remapped to another sector on an update, the old data is marked as invalid, and when fresh sectors are needed, these invalid sectors are then erased and made available for writing. Inevitably, even with wear leveling, cells will slowly start to reach the end of their lifespan. At this point, the controller adds the block to a map that contains the location of all bad blocks within the SSD. Blocks added to this map are no longer written to, and the accumulation of these bad blocks eventually leads to the decreased storage capacity and eventual failure of the SSD as a whole. Most consumer SSDs use a SATA 3 standard. SATA has been around for a long time and has largely kept pace with the increases in hard drive speeds. However, newer SSDs have been saturating the approximately 600 megabytes of bandwidth the connector is capable of providing, which is why we have been seeing more and more drives using alternative interfaces popping up. PCI Express has been used to connect just about everything you can hook up to a motherboard, from networking and sound cards to graphics cards and now SSDs. PCI Express 3.0 cards are capable of up to 4 GB per second transfer speeds. While PCI cards are more expensive than alternatives, they do represent the fastest drives available today. Another new alternative is M.2, which offers speeds of up to 2 GB per second, still significantly faster than any consumer grade drive. M.2 also has the advantage of being quite small with many new laptops and motherboards, including an M.2 slot for future expansion. 
For years and years, we have been attempting to squeeze more capacity out of SSDs by shrinking the transistors, so we can cram more and more NAND into the same space. Unfortunately, quantum physics tend to ruin everything like they normally do, and electrons will start jumping all over the place and end up in places they really ought not to be. While increasing the number of bits in each cell has been effective, accurately making measuring minute differences in changes of charge with hardware that is shrinking constantly is a bit of a problem. But don't worry, while it seems like the future may be down, it's actually up. Quite literally, as 3D NAND allows us to bend the NAND into a U-shape, and then stack it vertically as you can see in this diagram, giving us plenty of future breathing room for growth. 3D NAND can also be stacked on top of one another, with the current high stack being 48 in Samsung's new 16 terabyte SSD. Right now it's actually unknown just how high we can stack 3D NAND, and while controllers do get more complex with each individual stack, controller advances seem to be keeping pace lockstep with the current rate of expansion. Unlike other MLC and TLC technologies which slow drives down, 3D NAND actually speeds things up quite significantly. Modern 3D NAND drives increase performance by up to a factor of 2. Alright, we hope you guys enjoyed and or learned something from our presentation on SSDs. Feel free to like and subscribe, but not really because we'll probably never, ever do this again. Have a fantastic day.